technological uh, issues, but I think we've got them sorted. Uh, good morning, you're really welcome to Bally Down this morning. Um, uh, my name's Scott, I'm the assistant minister here, and it's great to see you. Uh, please join us afterwards for tea and coffee out in the hall and uh, the foyer as well. Um, and if you're visiting or you want to, to know more about us, please make yourself note. There's a well, information point as you would have made your way in. Uh, and there's prayer ministry afterwards over by the big window. If there's anything you want prayed for uh, or prayer, uh, prayer concerning, uh, please make use of that. Um, just one announcement before we start, uh, Crash and Tot Zone. Um, there are volunteers for Crash and Tot Zone for the weeks of uh, the 23rd of July, so that's next week, and the 6th and 20th of August. Um, that's, those are the weeks that there are volunteers in those rooms. Uh, the other weeks, it is uh, unmanned, if you will, so you can make use of those rooms. Just don't uh, bump your kids and leave, as I did last week. Um, so 23rd of July, uh, 6th and 20th of August, that's when there are volunteers. Um, we're here to worship God, hear from his word. Psalm 133 says this, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head running down of the beard on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It's like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Before uh, Helen and Kathy come and lead us in praise, let's go to our great God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord of the church, we thank you that you gather us together to encourage each other, to serve one another, to care for one another, as you send us out into your world. Would you help us to love one another more deeply and love the world more actively as a result of the love of your Son and the power of your Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Morning, everybody. Um, we're a wee bit light on the stage this morning. So um, some of the praise group are having a well-deserved break this week, but we'd really love it if you could just stand with us to um, worship and honour the Lord this morning. Come. 
and 5 says, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known among his nations what has been done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his name, let his hearts of those, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Loving kindness as the flower. 
Let's turn our hearts together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are God and we are not. You are the one who is completely loving and wise and good. And your plan for this world, your plan for reaching this world, for saving people, through your son Jesus and only through Jesus, it's far greater than anything we could ever comprehend. You are the creator. We are merely creatures. You are infinite. You're without beginning, without end. We are finite. We thank you and we praise you that all things exist because of you and for you. You're the one who promises to build your church. And in your loving wisdom, you allow us broken, messy people who are often filled with mixed motives and darkness, you allow even us to be part of your family, to be part of your church. Lord, this morning we acknowledge our sin and we're grieved by it. And where we aren't grieved by it, would you prick our consciences? Would you bring us back to you in repentance and faith? We don't love you how we ought. We don't love each other how we ought. So often we neglect to use what you've given us and care for what you love and love those you've joined us to. But we repent of those this morning, Father. We thank you that because of Jesus, and how he was pierced for our transgressions, how he was crushed for our iniquities. Through him we are brought peace and we are transformed and we are healed. We praise you for our salvation. We are eternally grateful for the assurance of forgiveness of sins that Jesus gives. Lord, we thank you for what you've given us, for what you continue to do for us. We thank you for those in the church who've led us to Jesus and grown us in him. Lord, we pray that because of your great love for us, would you grow in us a love for one another and a deep desire to see others come into your church. We pray all this this morning in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Do you open your Bibles with me to uh, Mark chapter 1, uh, page 1003 uh, in your church Bibles, 1003. Looking at what the boys and girls are looking at in Sunday Club later. Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 45. And this is God's word. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went, with, went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stood outside in the lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. Boys and girls, you want to come down in front? We'll have a...
Good morning, boys and girls. Let me show you a sign. It's a really easy sign, piece of sign language, really easy. Everybody should be able to learn it really quickly and hopefully remember it. And it's, it's this. Can everybody do that? Put one hand out, your left hand out, your right hand with the thumb up, and move it towards yourself. And this is a sign for help. Help. So if I move my hands towards you, I'd say, do you want help? And if you moved your hands towards yourself, you'd say, help me. Help. Do you want help? Help. Can everybody do that? One hand out, thumb up. One hand. Help. Help. Boys and girls, the, the story we learned today, or read today, was of a man who had leprosy, and he needed help. He had leprosy. Does anybody know what leprosy is? Yeah. You want to tell me? What's leprosy? Yeah, it's a horrible skin disease. Your skin would go white. Parts of your body might fall off. And if you had leprosy, boys and girls, it meant that you were unclean. You couldn't go near your family. You couldn't go near any other people. And you couldn't go to the temple where people in those days worshipped God. You couldn't do anything. You were completely unclean. And if you had leprosy, the chances are you would die of leprosy. You couldn't do anything to make yourself better. This man had leprosy. He needed help. And Jesus him to his tongue. And if there's one thing you take away from this morning, it's this, boys and girls. Jesus wants to help you. Jesus wants to help you. This man, he had no hope. He couldn't make himself better. And he went to Jesus and he said, Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He asked Jesus for help. And Jesus said this, I am willing. Be clean. And Jesus showed that he is powerful to help. And he reached out and he touched the man. And like that, his leprosy was gone and he was made clean. Boys and girls, you and I, without Jesus, by ourselves, we are unclean. You and I, each one of us, we have sin. And our sin means that we can't come to God. And there's nothing we can do to make our sin go away. We can't try loads of good things to make our sin go away. We can't uh, come to church all the time to make our sin go away, although we should do nice things and we should come to church. There's nothing we can do to make our sin clean apart from go to Jesus. Because Jesus, who lived a perfect life, died on the cross for you and me to forgive our sins. Jesus lived a perfect life and died on the cross in our place to forgive our sins. And if we go to Jesus and we say, help me, he promises that he'll forgive us. He'll forgive us our, our sins and he'll make us right with him. But more than that, boys and girls, more than that, when we follow Jesus and we belong to him, at any time, on any day, on any occasion, when we are sad, when we have problems, when we have struggles, we can say to Jesus, help me. And he promises that he will. Help me. Jesus wants to help you. If you're sad, got problems, if you don't know what to do, the best thing that you can ever say to Jesus is help me, because he loves to do that. He loves to do that. That's what this story shows. We're going to pray, and then we're going to sing your song. Let's talk to God and pray. Father, we thank you that you love to help us, that you help us with our biggest need, that you forgive us our sins because of Jesus, who loves us so much that he died on the cross to forgive us. We thank you that you love to forgive us, and that you love to help us live for you. Dear God, would you help us to remember, to ask you to help us every day in anything that we need help for. And we thank you so much that you love to help us. You love to be with us. You love to hear. We pray all this in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. I've got Mark to help us this morning. All right. Boys and girls, would you all like to stand? Would the mums and dads everybody like to stand as well?
Boys and girls, you can go out to Summer Club. Or no, Family Club. Uh, a few uh, announcements for you. Um, Liam is on holidays this week, so he'll be back next Sunday. And so if you need uh, any pastoral assistance or any uh, pastoral care in the meantime, uh, please contact myself or Ian Montgomery. Um, and if you need my number, just ask me. I'll be at the door afterwards. Um, so just ask for that. Uh, Donna is also away on annual leave until the 29th. So if you've emailed Donna uh, and haven't got a response, that's why. Uh, don't expect one until the 30th. Uh, please remember uh, both Liam and Donna in your prayers. Uh, Holiday Bible Club, Rebecca's got some announcements for that. And while Rebecca comes up, um, anybody in GB or Holiday Bible Club or anyone else for that matter who uh, needs to get their access and I forms done, um, I'm informed there's a few of you, uh, please see Sharon Moffat out in the foyer afterwards. Uh, she'll keep you right. As you might already know, Holiday Bible Club will run the last week of July, which is Monday the 24th until Friday the 28th, from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. It's open for children who are going into P2 through to children who are going into first year. If you'd like your child to attend, please fill in the consent form, which can be accessed through the announcements page on the church website or through the Ballydown Holiday Bible Club Facebook page. And please do this by next Sunday. Thank you to everyone who's volunteered to be a leader or junior leader. We have a great number of volunteers. There will be a meeting this Tuesday, which is the 18th, at 7 p.m. to explain what is happening during the week. It would be good for all leaders and junior leaders to attend. We need help getting the decorations sorted for the club, so on Friday the 21st at 7 p.m. we'll meet here. You don't have to be involved in the actual club to attend, and you do not have to be creative. There will be designs ready to go, we just need your help with cutting, sticking, etc. If you're planning on coming, could you please bring a pair of scissors with you? There will be a prayer meeting each evening at 7 p.m. from Sunday the 23rd until Thursday the 27th for Holy Bible Club, and everyone's invited to attend. Anyone who's got crafts from last week to cut out, can you please give them back to me after the service? So the meeting's on Tuesday the 18th at 7 p.m. for leaders and junior leaders. Decorations evening is open to everyone and will be on Friday the 21st at 7, and please bring your own scissors for that. Thank you. Big thanks to Rebecca for all, all the work that she's put in the Holiday Bible Club as well. Uh, and can I just bring to your attention uh, our church plant prayer. Uh, we meet uh, Thursday nights at half nine to pray for um, Fo's uh, church plant outreach in our town. Um, that's a good, really, really good way to get involved in that, even if you're not planning to be involved in that by going. It's a really good way and easy way to just show up and pray. Uh, this Thursday night we'll be meeting just in the foyer uh, in church here. So half nine, Thursday nights, um, it doesn't usually last any longer than half an hour. Um, so please uh, consider coming to that uh, and praying. Um, even if you're just nosy and want to know what's happening, um, come and be nosy and then pray with us. Uh, it'd be really great to see you there. Uh, we'll take the offering. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your generosity towards us. We thank you that you give us every good thing and every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Father, as we give back to you that which is already yours, would you use it to make your name known, to grow your church, to build your kingdom um, here in Banbridge, across our province, across our island, and across your world. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. And let's spend some time praying for others now as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you um, that you love to hear from us. We thank you for the privilege that we have to come before you with our requests, that we can make them known to you, that we have full assurance that you hear and that you answer. Father, we thank you for um, Liam and for Donna. We thank you for the work that they do to serve our church family here in Ballydown. We thank you for the gifts and abilities and the passions that you have given them. And we thank you so much that they use them uh, to bless us, to bless so many people, to make your name known in a variety of ways. Father, as they take annual leave, as they um, rest and relax, we follow, Father, we pray that you would um, build them up, Lord, that you would restore them 
uh, and Lord, that when they come back, they be ready to go in the power of your spirit. Father, we thank you for um, our Holiday Bible Club. We thank you for all the effort that has been put into it so far. We thank you especially for Rebecca, um, the gifting that you've given her, uh, and the, the character that you've given her as well. Lord, would you bless her and keep her as she um, organizes and keeps people right. Father, we pray for the, the children that come and for their parents, for their families. We pray that this would be a really good way to connect with people who don't otherwise come to church. And Father, that it wouldn't uh, be a connection that just lasts a week. Lord, that it would be a long-term thing. Father, we pray that you'd be preparing um, the hearts of the children who would come, that they'd be ready to receive the good news of Jesus. Um, Father, we pray for salvation. We know that you love to do that, and we pray that you would do it that week. Father, for those um, in our church family who are in hospital, uh, who have loved ones in hospital, Father, we pray that you would draw near to them. Lord, we ask for healing. We ask for peace. Lord, we ask that practical needs would be met. Lord, for those who have worries, fears, draw near to them. For those who are mourning and grieving, who would know your comfort at this time. Father, for our nation, we thank you for the relative peace that we've enjoyed this past week. Father, we pray that that would um, continue. And Father, for the destruction that has been caused, we pray that those who have um, assaulted members of the emergency services would be brought to justice. And Father, for those who claim your name yet have nothing to do with you this week, Father, we pray that you would convict them of their sin, of their need for Jesus, and draw them to yourself. Father, we pray that um, things that are carried out in the name of Jesus that have nothing to do with you, that have nothing to do with the gospel, Lord, that that wouldn't be a barrier to others from other religious backgrounds or no religious backgrounds coming to saving faith in Jesus. Help us as a church to display what true uh, gospel relationships look like, what gospel priorities look like. Father, for those suffering from the heat wave that's um, going across Europe, especially the elderly, um, those with additional needs, Father, that you would draw near to them and bring comfort to them. And Lord, for churches across our island, from Belfast to Balbriggan, we pray that you would continue to grow churches, that you would con 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 continue to plant churches in, in our island, Lord, that the gospel would go forward, that the church would grow, that people would be reached, that many lives would come to know Jesus in a saving way. We pray this for his sake. Amen. Can you open your Bibles to uh, Romans chapter 12, please? Uh, page 1139 in your church Bible. And we're going to read the whole chapter. Romans chapter 12, this is God's word. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in a proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. 
be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. As we come to learn from God's word, let's ask him for his help. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. It's living, it's active, it's true. It tells us about who you are, who we are, and who we ought to be. Father, would you grow in our hearts this morning a greater awareness of what you call us to do. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Over the uh, summer months, um, we are spent some time thinking about mission. Making God's grace and glory known to a rebellious world in order to see people brought from death to life by faith in Jesus in the power of the Spirit. And so far, we've seen that mission is all about Jesus. Our motivation in mission, our motivation really in all of life, should be nothing short of the glory of God, that God would be known, that God would be praised and glorified by people coming to saving faith in Jesus. And we saw last week that mission is tied up with the idea of the kingdom of God, a message that calls all people everywhere to repent and believe and be brought under the good rule and reign of the Lord Jesus. It's not a short-term fix, but it's a long-haul project, and it's completely honest about the blessings of belief as well as the judgment of rejection. And today, we're zooming in from those big-picture ideas to think about mission and the church and not the church's mission, per se, not what the church is called to do, but the relationship between those who want to be on mission, who want to see people reached, the relationship between such people and the church. So let me ask you this. What is your view of the church? How important do you think church is? Going to church, participating, serving. How, how important do you think church really is? Is your view really high? It's absolutely vital. Is it, is it low? Take it or leave it, depending on what's on that day. Or is it somewhere in between? It's worth thinking about. It's worth this morning taking a step back and looking at your life to understand the way that you view church. Because the reality is this. We don't have a high view of church that is practically shown by how we treat church with our time, our participation, and let's be blunt, weekly attendance. If we don't have a high view of the church, we will make no difference in this world. If we don't have a high view of church, we will make no difference in mission. Gathering needs to lead to going. And we can't truly gather together unless we actually go, and we can't actually go unless we truly gather together. Now, that might sound extreme, but it's true. If we don't care about the church, that is truly care about the people that Jesus has eternally joined us to and given us here and now to spend time with and represent him, we can't care about the world. We can't care about the world, at least how Jesus desires us to. Think of it this way. What, what single person has made the most difference in history of the world? And the Sunday school answer here is the right answer. It's Jesus, isn't it? And what was Jesus' view of the church? I think we want to say incredibly high, don't we? 
And how does he show that? Well, Ephesians 5 tells us, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Do you see that? It's not just for an individual here and there that Jesus died for, but for the whole body. The church is the focus of Jesus' life and ministry. The church is Jesus' focus on the cross. And that continues. When at the end of the Gospels, Jesus commissions people for mission, does he give the charge to just individuals? No, he gives it to the body of believers, the church. And as we've seen in Acts, as people come to faith in Jesus, do they do so in just an individual way? Of course, they have to decide for themselves to repent and believe and trust in Jesus for themselves. But Acts also describes new believers being added to their number, coming into the church family. You see, mission and church are inseparable. You can't have one without the other. And so if we're going to think practically over these months, and hopefully over the courses of our lifetimes, if we're going to think about mission, we need to think well about the church. The passage we read earlier was Romans 12. The book of Romans was written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome, a church that only came about because of mission. A church that had many complications in it, with different people, Jews and Gentiles, coming to saving faith and being brought into the church family as a result of mission. A church that God clearly wanted to grow, you see that in this letter, by means of mission. And a church that Paul was requesting help from, you see that in chapter 15, verses 22 to 33, Paul was requesting help from for mission that he was involved in, planting churches, discipling, and evangelizing. Romans is a letter written to a church because of mission. Romans 12 begins with this line. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, or I appeal, therefore, to you, brothers, by the mercies of God. So what are the mercies of God that, that Paul is talking about? Well, it refers to the whole book of Romans at this point. The fact that there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus, none. And so if you ever feel guilt, if you're aware that your life is not all it could or should be, if you are aware that you fall short of the mark, if you have faith in Jesus, if you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you know and love Jesus, God wants you to know there is no condemnation for you. Zilch. Do you know Jesus today? Because if you do, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. The same Jesus who loves you so much that when you were his enemy, he died for you. He shed his blood on the cross for you to make you his friend, to bring you into his eternal family. If you belong to Jesus, you're no longer an enemy with God, but you share in his perfection and the riches that belong to him. God has made you his friend, brought you into his family. This is who God has made you to be. And God wants you to use your newfound identity in Jesus to make a difference for Jesus, to make him known. These are the mercies of God. God's grace to us, grace that should stir up in us in our innermost being an appetite to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, strength, and love our neighbors as ourselves. And Paul writes, because of these mercies, do three things. And I want to argue these three, three things are integral to church and mission. It says, because of the mercies of God, be together, be involved, and be caring. Be together, be involved, and be caring. All three essential for church. All three essential for mission. You can't have church and mission without them. Be together. Romans 12, verse 1. Now, in your church Bibles, which is the old NIV, it says this. In view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now, on first look at that, you might be struggling to see how this has anything to do with being together. Except, uh, that's not exactly what Paul says. The ESV gets it better. Now, see if you can hear the difference. It says this. By the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Hear the difference? It's subtle, but it's important. It's not supposed to be offer your bodies as lots of living sacrifices. 
but it's offering your bodies as a living sacrifice. Singular. What difference does that make, you might say? Well, I want to argue it makes a huge difference. Responding to God's mercy, part of which involves going on mission and making the God of mercy known, is not an individualistic endeavor. It's not primarily something that we go off and do by ourselves. It's a group effort. And in the church, we are called to present our bodies as one sacrifice. See, in church and mission, there's no place for a just Jesus and me Christianity. There's no room for that in Paul's thinking here. There's no room for that in any of the Bible. Responding to the mercies of God, it has to be done individually, but it also has to be done corporately by those who have been joined together by Jesus for Jesus. Mission is a group task, and it can't take place apart from the church. Immediately, verse 2 falls with, don't be conformed to this world. Is there anything more worldly than an individualistic outlook? I'd argue not. See, one of the, the problems in the Roman church as it was growing and seeking to go on mission is that there were fractures. And Paul is saying that's not the way it should be for God's missional family. We've got to be together. We have to be together in unity. There can be no place for bitterness or infighting. But we also have to be together in reality. If we're to present our bodies together, our bodies need to be together. We need to be here, Sunday by Sunday. If we're to be on mission, what we do here on a Sunday morning isn't an optional add-on. It's central. Now, I know it's summer and people are on their holidays, and the last thing I want to do is dissuade people from taking their hard-earned holidays. It's also the fact that because of illness or age or limitation, or people who work, uh, especially in essential services, others can't make it to church. But for those who can make it to church, we're called to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, the language of sacrifice means that something has to go, doesn't it? I once heard someone say that sacrifice is giving up something for something better. And that's what Romans 12 is teaching. We're called to come together, even when that's hard. Even when that means making difficult decisions to come together. So you look at Banbridge. And you ask the question, what is the religion of Banbridge? Uh, the one thing, as an outsider to Banbridge, that really stood out to me is one of the religions of Banbridge is sport. I'd argue Romans 12 says sport instead of church is a non-starter. Another one of the religions of Banbridge is education. And so in exam season, we need to acknowledge that there's something more important than A-levels or finals. Another one of the religions of Banbridge is leisure. And so when there's nice weather and the morns are calling, we have to call to mind the mercies of God that have called us out of the darkness and into his glorious light, something that is far superior, that the creator is better than his creation. We remember that the mercies of God that bring us into mission with God, something that's infinitely more important than any of those things. And so with joy, we present our bodies to God together. It's been said up the front uh, over the last few months a few times that the fastest growing church in the world is in Iran. Why? Because they're on mission as a church, and they do it together. If a persecuted Iranian came here to Banbridge, could you convince them that this, that, or the other is good enough a reason to not come to church with God's people who's joined together to worship him? I'd say probably not. After all, if we're on mission as a church, to lead people into relationship with the living God and therefore his family, which is the church, and then we're to turn around and say, well, it's not that important. There's not much point in going on a mission in the first place, is there? Hebrews 10 tells us that meeting together is integral to mission. Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works. Thinking about missional activity there. 
not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. We meet together as one body because of the mercies of God. God who made enemies like us his friends by the blood of Jesus. We meet together to stir one another up to go and love the world, to go on mission, to bring news of the kingdom to people who are dead in their sins. If we're going to go on mission, we need to be together. And if we're going to go on mission, we need to be involved. Verses 3 to 5, Paul builds on the idea of being together, being united to one another with the image of the body. He says this, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Paul said, here, we're together. We're intrinsically linked. We need to be together. And then because we are together, we're reliant upon another using our gifts and abilities that God has given us. He goes on. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve it. Teaching, let him teach. And it goes on and on. As if to say, whatever gift you've been given, use it. The church is the place that we're called to be together, to make an impact in this world. It's the place that we use our gifts together. It's where we get involved in God's mission. This is base camp for God's mission. If we don't start here, we can't go anywhere else. If we're not involved here, we really shouldn't be involved anywhere else. Now, we've thought um, about this as a church using our gifts, using our talents. So we won't dwell on this for too long. But if nothing else, if we're to be a missional church here in Ballydown, we can't just take a few talented people and make them do all the work. Now, Paul says we have different gifts. Not some people are gifted, but we have different gifts. All people are gifted, and all those gifts come from God. And Paul says essentially this, whatever your gift is, use it. Get involved. We need to be together, and when we are together, we can't just sit on the sidelines, but we're all required to get in on the action in different ways, sure, but in some shape or form, we're required to roll up our sleeves and get stuck in. If Jesus has saved you, he calls you to use the gifts he's given you to encourage other believers and then make him known to those who don't yet know him. A good prayer to pray is this, Lord, help me to see the opportunities you're giving me to get involved and help me to get involved. We need to be get together. We need to be involved. And we need to be caring. We need to be caring. The start of verse 9 really sets the agenda for the rest of the passage. Love must be sincere. In other words, if we're going to truly be together and truly be involved in a way that makes a difference, we need to be people who genuinely love. Not people who act loving, people who are actually loving. Love must be sincere. We need to ask God to give us soft, tender hearts because of his mercy. The only way that our hearts can be soft, that our love can be sincere, is the mercies of God. When we learn to love Jesus because of his great love for us, that's when we can go and love others for Jesus because we've been loved by Jesus. And this love is directed at both those who belong to the church and those who don't, believers and unbelievers, insiders and outsiders. Verse 10 says, be devoted to one another in brotherly affection. That's clearly directed at believers, isn't it? The sort of church family, the sort of missional community that we ought to be within ourselves so that the outside looking in can see that we really believe what we say we believe. But verse 13 moves from the inside to the outside. And again, all within the context of church. Verse 13, share with God's people who are in need, which is a side note that's interesting because we awfully wrongly think about mercy ministry as mission. It is verse 13 to say to share with God's people, not as mission, but instead living out our spiritual familial relationships. 
But then verse 13 goes on to say, practice hospitality, which applies to everyone. And really from verses 14 onwards, we see how we ought to live to the outside world. We ought to bless and empathize and be good neighbors and be good friends and make Jesus known. But we can only do that and do that well with a heart that really loves. A heart that really loves, a heart that really feels, a heart that really cares because we've been cared by and loved by a merciful God whose mission it is to bring sinners to himself. That's what he's done for us. Where does it start for us to love as Christ loved us? In the church. It's only on the base camp of the church that we can do mission. And if we want to do mission, which is the best thing we can do, isn't it? Making Jesus known. If we want to be part of his mission, we have to take hold of what he gives us in the church. We can't have mission without the church. We've got to be together. We've got to be involved. We've got to be caring. We do that because of the mercies of God. And we know that when we do that, he will help us by his spirit. He'll help us live for his glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that before you call us to do anything, you call us to yourself. You call us to yourself when we do not deserve it. When we were rebellious enemies of you, Jesus died to make us your friends. Father, we thank you for such mercy. We thank you that in your mercy you give us one another. You join us together and call us to be together. You make us reliant upon one another to showcase your glory and your grace to an unwithin world. And Father, thank you that when you call us to be together and be involved and be caring and you send us out. Lord, help us not to ever try and do mission without loving your church. And Lord, help us not to try and be a loving church without also doing mission. Lord, we need your help to do this. Would you help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we sing, can I just draw your attention to prayer ministry? Oh, it's gone off. Uh, prayer ministry afterwards over at the window. Uh, please make use of that if there's anything uh, you feel uh, the need of prayer for. Uh, and tea and coffee uh, after the service as well. Thanks. Okay, would you like to just stand? Oh, I think she did our job. Thank you. Thank you.
the benediction together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.